Hi, I'm Ryan from Make Test Battle, and I've finally gotten around to building a HPA blaster, and this is the Ultra Sledge Fire. You'll notice this small thing here. This connects to a paintball tank, and it's freaking cool. Let me show you how I made it. I've always been a fan of using high pressured air like what you use in paintball for Nerf. So sit down, buckle up, I'm gonna learn you some things. This is gonna be a fun episode. Just recently, I've managed to get my hands on a paintball tank and all of the parts to start creating proper HPA stuff. So a while back, I made some HPA builds that were using an air tank from a scuba tank. Oh, Jesus. Okay, this is what I used to use. I can't remember how big it is. It's, it's a decent sized pony bottle for scuba diving. Now, I'm actually a licensed scuba diver, so I will at some point try and actually use this for diving. It works exactly the same as a paintball bottle. You have your first stage reg, second stage reg, except this is a second stage of the first stage here, and then I had secondary ones mounted on these cords. This was just so heavy um, because this is an aluminium tank and this one is carbon fiber. This still has higher capacity, but I can pick this up with one hand. This is an F. When you're diving and in the water, it doesn't matter because this is actually very close to neutrally buoyant. Um, but yeah, nah. I'm gonna try and explain all of this stuff as I go. This is not gonna be a build tutorial because it's pretty advanced and it's something that you should investigate and learn more yourself before you try and do this and blow yourself up. For this video, I'm going to be taking this sledge fire, this amazing blaster, the XBZ or Busby Extreme Blast Zooka, and merging them. I'm going to be using some artifact barrel material and a 3D printed shell to fire single shots and I will of course maintain the ability to fire triple. Yeah. So this, this mod isn't original. You should check out Liam at Spectre's Nerf Mods. Uh, he's done some really cool HPA stuff. I am two steps behind in that arms race. He did this, I saw it, fell in love, and basically figured I'll stick it to Justin and make a sledge fire that's twice as powerful. Hey! So, <laughs> so enough chattering. I'm gonna start pulling this apart. The Extreme Blast Zooka, as I mentioned before, obnoxious because they do not sell these in Australia. These are quite expensive for us to get. They're super simple to operate. They're the bee's knees. <laughs> they are the buzz bee's knees, in fact. Well, a lot of nerfers call them back pressure tanks, but it's basically an integrated QEV plus air tank, which What's I, a will, QEV? Uh, I will explain that in good time. And that good time will be in about five seconds. Straight in the bin. So this is Ryan's really quick intro into HPA stuff and I promise to explain this in more detail in a future video. But right now I just want to quickly explain why the XBZ is so cool. So, first of all, this is how you would conventionally do a HPA setup. You have a three position two way valve, you have a quick exhaust valve and an air tank. Air comes in through this valve into the air tank and then when you press the button you seal off your air source fire the QEV and dump all of this air out the front. Now, this is clunky and awkward. Um, the QEV takes up a lot of space, the air tank is usually obnoxious to position. These valves, I mean, we're gonna be using one of these, but you know, you've gotta put that somewhere. What the XBZ does for us, in its stock form, the XBZ is one of these all-in-one thing. We're only gonna be using this part, so, the QEV and air tank. In an XBZ, you have a pump that fills the air tank. Now that air tank actually surrounds what is effectively a QEV. And then this here, the blast button, is exactly the same as that three position, except that it doesn't seal from the pump. So straight to HBA, we cannot just stick an airline in the back because that would stop this blast button from working because instead of venting to fire the QEV, you're just gonna empty your line. I'm gonna lop off the front here. Air tank sits roughly in like that. This will get chopped off about here with a cap on it. And then we will have, as I said before, a six millimeter push connect fitting that sort of goes just in the back. This valve here, this is an MJV03-S. 
M or dash 3M, I don't remember. Now that is basically our trigger. I'll have the stock trigger in there somehow so it still looks nice. This connector for my airline will, uh, I'll have to do a bit of dremeling, but it'll sit somewhere inside the stock there. And then just airline from here to here, and then from here into the air tank. Then when I connect it to my bottle, pressing that will fire it, releasing it will refill the air tank, nice and easy. The main challenge and the main daunting part of this build, figuring out how to actually get that on there. Obviously I'm gonna have to snip a bunch of stuff, but I don't know what this looks like inside. And this was a $50 buy for me here and I don't wanna ruin it. This is junk. This is worthless to us. No! <laughs> I'll keep this because I still want to look like a badass with the flick and the, the button and all that. What about interfacing? Uh, the only thing that I'll be keeping is the trigger. So I'll probably cut this out or I don't know. Um, and the very front because I still want to be able to seal to the stock shells. Uh, in Liam's build, he uh, didn't keep that functionality and in Justin's build, he didn't keep that functionality either. But I really wanna be able to keep the stock shell triple shot capability. A long time ago, I made a video about doing shotguns and I'm still gonna do that. But instead of doing those 3D printed shells, I'm gonna be using sledge fire shells. So a double barrel break action is now being reduced to a sledge fire, but hey, it's still cool. Uh, I am still working on the pump action that is currently back in progress. Now I have a saw of sledge fire shells. So one of the things that I really want to be able to do is to retain the ejection capability and not just retain it, but I want to actually improve it. The stock ejection system just sort of raises the shell. But as far as I'm aware, a very simple change will allow the shells to be completely ejected out of the blaster. And if not, I have this massive box of tension springs. Flip the shells out so I can look like an absolute badass. Da -da -da -da. As far as I'm aware, if you loop it around this one, the ejection is much stronger. The last way I did something like this ages back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's find out. Ooh, not quite. Not quite. Yeah, no, I want more. More. Like Agent yeah. Smith doing, losing the fight against Neo. Ooh, that'll do. One of the main issues that I think we're gonna have in this build is the fact that this ejection piece is for stock shells and won't be compatible, just like in Justin's Super Sledge Fire, with the uh, round barrel that goes through. So I might actually have to 3D print this part to replace it, or maybe I can just glue something flat across. quickly just slapped it back together again. Uh, this is the first time I've actually tested this. All right. That's not yeah, you gotta put, no, you're not push, it's not pushed in. Oh. Cause it's dropping beyond the point. Oh, okay. That's something I'm gonna have to watch out for. Ah, I expected it when I slapped it closed like that to push the shell back into the thing and seal it like it normally would. But there's no plunger face. Let's try this. Did I just do it again? I think because maybe the downward momentum makes it fall forwards. I don't know. I really don't know. When it falls. Maybe try right. a more beefed up spring. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put a stronger spring in it. That is not a strong enough spring. Definitely for static, but not for dynamic. Ooh, now there's a spring. Take two. This one's a lot shorter, so I don't think I will need to stretch it because it's a much more intense spring. So over we go. All right. I've also put, ah, it's fucking greasy. Eh! All right. Ah! Ryan, grumpy. Always need more power. Clarkson and I would get along for all of the wrong reasons. I've stretched that same spring out to that further tab, so if this doesn't do it, well, I guess we get a bigger spring. Fuck you, Ponder Tube. Why do you have to be like this? Did you get consent first? I want to see your consent slips. Oh, I cannot wait to saw this thing in half now. It's gotten me 
greased. It has gotten me annoyed. It's dirty. Mm. All right. Oh! Hey! All right. <laughs> Success. Repeat. Science is repeating the result. No. Not that last one. Now nah, let's do that again. It's a really soft release. I am currently happy with it though. I will just get used to flicking the wrist in such a way that it loads the shell properly. Which, you know, I was doing. Flick the wrist. Leviosa, not Leviosa. First mod complete. <sighs> Spoopy. I'm nervous. I'm very nervous about this bit. All right, now is the scary part. The next step, I'm basically going to cut the pump and stock blast button off this XBZ. The bandsaw is gonna get a straighter cut than anything I could do by hand. So I'll just take it slow, I'll take little slices and just explore the XBZ blind. It's like surgery when you just start cutting into someone and you don't know what's wrong, but something in there will tell you. Oh, there's your problem. You got a knife in you. So one thing I learned the hard way last time I cut the front off one of these, Always put a little bit of air inside the air tank, just like one or two pumps, so no dust gets inside it. Um, it can ruin the seal, and I've had that happen before. So, yeah, don't do that. Release it. Pachoo! This XBZ no longer works with a pump. That comes out. That is the stock blast button. I think I can take another little bit off. Cool. So what we just cut off, a check valve and the blast button. This uh, seals in the air that came from the pump. And then this thing basically vents all of the air that is keeping the gasket seal or actually I don't even the membrane I don't know thing inside the air tank sealed shut that's all we've cut off here I think what I need to do next cut this flush with this face here all right all right all right now I need to take down this diameter in order to glue our end cap on just on the belt sander really gently just sand this down until that fits That was nowhere near as much as I thought it was going to be, but we're getting there. This is one of those moments where I wish I had a lathe. If I had a lathe, I could just chuck that up and then and take like two seconds to do. Let's see how this is. <laughs> there we go. Is that enough? I think so. Like over here? I think I've got about... that much. Can you maybe use a file or something to square it in? That might be a good idea. I think I'm good. Look at that. That is perfect. Dab a bit of solvent weld in there and that is not going anywhere. Alright, what I'm going to do is drill this with a, or actually the appropriate size drill bit and then tap it so that I can then thread in an eighth fitting on the back. It's tapping into PVC, I don't know how that's going to go, but you know, whatever. You can tap PVC. Yeah, it'd be fine. I'd tap PVC. What I've got to do is, I'm just tapping this hole that I drilled. It was a little undersized, so I had to dremel it a bit wider. I hope that's okay, but uh, this is also not how you meant to do it, but I don't have a tap wrench, so I'm just using a normal wrench. That should be enough. Ah, look at that. Perfect. Cool, that actually worked. <laughs> nice. Nice. I was expecting failure and was pleasantly surprised. Even though this has gone quite well, I'm still going to pour epoxy down on the inside of this, put some around on the outside, just to ensure that I have a good seal. This step here 
is about one centimeter. And then the depth from this edge down to the fitting inside is pretty much spot on two centimeters. I measured it before. Basically what I wanna do is cut this down by about a centimeter so it sits nice and flush with as minimal volume wasted in there as possible. I'm basically just gonna pour a whole bunch of epoxy into the end cap. So I'm gonna need quite a lot for this. If you wanna support the channel, we will be having a, an affiliate link in the description and that gives us a little kickback per your purchase. What he said. I'm not using the epoxy to glue the end cap to the tank. I'm gonna be using PVC cement for that. What I'm using the epoxy for is to glue it just the fitting in place, so. Cast the fitting in place, almost. Basically. Just don't drip it inside. I think I can get a little bit more in. I will try and wipe it clean. This, it is very clear that this stuff is dangerous. The epoxy's pretty much set, so I'm just gonna put a rim around in there. Shove it on you there. you put it on both sides? Uh, I believe you only put it on one. Oh, to both surfaces, you're right. Yep, and one sec. I thought the exact same thing. Never get to look like deviants. No, no, scientists. <laughs> this should work, but I have not used solvent cement before. Let's see how this goes. Ooh, even though I'm wearing safeties, I can feel this on my eyes. This is nasty stuff. All right. Okay. Okay, well, those, for better or for worse, are never coming apart. Uh, yeah, and that is pressed on as far as it will go. So the thing I discovered in my build is that this is glued on. Oh, is it? Uh, unless you're lucky. No, it's glued. I can see the solvent weld. Aha! There we go. Nice and clean. Sweet. So we're gonna use this coping saw to cut out this gap. I can't be bothered to dremel it. How come you need to cut that out? Because it will improve the airflow for my slug shells. You're not worried you're gonna lose air seal because you're cutting no, out No, 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 no. The stock shells seal around on this outside little gasket here. And so by just lopping off that little bit, we don't actually lose anything. Cut one. Cut two. And cut three. With my slug shell, it now has a clear air path straight down the middle. So the next step that I need to do is to fill up these gaps in here. So in order to do that, I've wrapped the tank with tape so it seats nicely in the plunger tube. I'm gonna do this in a bit, but before I do that, I just wanna make it sit nicely. And so I need to cut out this screw post here. Might be enough, I'm not sure. No, okay, it looks like I also need to take out this track. That sits in quite nicely. So I want to reuse this uh, tank in the future. So protecting it from the epoxy putty, I'm going to wrap it with a thin layer of tape and then just smudge that into the middle. About this much. I can always mix up some more. This is always very meditative, mushing epoxy putty. It sticks to your nitro gloves. That smell, yum yum. You've opened the door. I need to set up a fan. Yeah. It's fine. Okay, that looks good to me. So let's make that into roughly a sledge fire plunger tube shaped ring. Drop it. We take this, smush it. Then, what we need to do is cut out this tank.
Okay, that's actually created nice shape on the inside of the plunger tube. I don't know if you can see that, but it's yeah, that's good. smushed quite a nice seal down in there. I want to leave that in. You don't want to remove the screw post? No, I've removed too many screw posts already. <laughs> that thing there. Excellent. So in order to make the stock trigger work with this valve, I'm basically going to have to shave off a whole bunch on the back. And I've done a little bit of dremeling in and around this area, so now this trigger valve fits in here really nicely and activates on the pull of the trigger. So you see I've also had to drill a small hole in the shell here. Other side, you can see this small hole in the valve there, and that's where the air actually vents out. Because I'm gonna be gluing this flush to this side of the shell, you know, the air has to go somewhere. You can't see it when my finger's covering it, so it's all good. Well, now I've gotta wait for the hot glue gun to heat up, and I can glue this all in place. I'm just gonna hot glue gun it in. Yeah. Dude, hot glue gun is the magic of Nerf. You Ew. can't not use a hot glue gun. Ew. This, in Australian dollars, is like a 25 plus dollar valve. If I wanted one of them, it would be a 45 dollar component. I'm not going to epoxy it into the shell if I want to potentially reuse it in the future, so. Get the trigger in, see if this fits. <gasps> <laughs> He's become death. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. All right, show us what you did. Oh, wow. I just immediately realized I haven't Teflon taped these. Getting very close to the end of the build. All I need to do now is cut these to the right side to epoxy in this fitting. And that is our HPA build done. Yeah. I've still got to wait for this glue to fully set. So, uh, next day. Yep, that'll be tomorrow. And you need to go fill up your air tank. And I need to go fill up my paintball bottle. I'm not sure if I went over this setup. This is the bottle. Uh, it's not full, so we're all safe here. Basically, this stores it at 4,500 PSI, and then this reg, which is an SL reg, um, takes it down to 300 PSI because it's a low pressure reg. Now, this fitting here, when you turn it like that, engages the airflow into this regulator, which is rated up to 300 PSI, and it can go anywhere between 0 to 150. Now, I've taken the dial out for the moment, but I will have a dial here, so I can double check that, and then these little guys here will connect to a remote line, nice like that, and then this remote line on the end just simply plugs into there, like that. Now this is mounted, we need to trim the hoses to the right length. It's still a bit long. Bam, perfect. That's not kinking too far. Shit. Yeah, no. That is far too short. Damn it! Perfect. That should go there. Trigger should go here. That needs to go there. Get in the... Don't breathe. Haha! -ha! You know what's gonna happen next though? Once it's done, we gotta get like Liam to come down here or something like Liam Ooh, Davis. Yeah, we'll have a HPA war. You got a duel. Dude, he has been several steps ahead of me in the arms race thus far. I've had a lot of ideas, but I just haven't had the parts to practically put them into action. But this is 
the gauntlet being thrown down, so to speak. That is disgusting and sweaty, because I've been wearing these for the last four hours. Friendly rivalry, of course, but this was actually originally his design. I've taken it. I'm pretty sure I've improved it a lot. It still uses the stock trigger. I think his, he pressed straight on the button. It still keeps the stock shells. Exactly the same construction. I asked him for help on some of the parts, but onwards and upwards. Green. Yeah. I don't know what's next. I think I'm gonna revive my uh, pump action semi-auto and then, uh, yeah, then the sky's the limit from there. But what we've got here is a desktop air compressor that I use for airbrushing and a gallon tank. This tank is at about 80 PSI, regulated down to about 60 at the moment. This is what I use for testing all of my air blasters. So I'm just gonna connect it to this via the remote line for the first time. All right, so, uh, 60 PSI. <laughs> yes. And then, and then, Here, now, we've got a shell and it's got the prototype worker Steffens. Yes. Now we have this barrel, long ass artifact barrel that I've whammed into a 3D printed shell. Now that shoves in like this. Artifact Steffen. Uh, okay, this is an artifact Steffen. Ooh. That vapor. Do you even vape? All right, we have a, a koosh. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna crony that real quick. My goal was to double Justin's performance, and I want to see if we've achieved that. Come on, 70. Oh, the pressure's dropped off a little. I don't think uh, koosh's would be optimal, since their heads are quite broad and can drag. But, oh well. 192. Awesome. I don't know what that'll go when I crank up the pressure a little bit further. I don't know what the maximum pressure of this is, but I'm really happy with that. It's not quite double Justin's performance, but I'm not going to complain about 190 FPS. Particularly when I can just reload, fire. Reload, fire. You get the idea. And this is freaking cool. Does that not just look really freaking badass? <sighs> You've watched me build this thing and I'm sure you saw how happy I was with the performance at the end. It's more than I was expecting, like, it worked exactly how I wanted to and then some. Since we've recorded all of that, I've actually taken this to a Humans vs Zombies game and my god, running this thing with the six dart Stefan shells was fantastic at HVZ. Every single shot I fired connected with my target. I figured out a really easy way to reload holding a couple of shells in my offhand. It was phenomenal. Definitely be doing more HPA stuff, but this is always going to be the first good HPA mod that I'm happy with. This tank will last me oh, forever. I'm not exactly sure how long it'll last. I think you Flat. used 500 PSI at HVZ. So I used uh, about 80 to 100 shells. And also yeah. using the Destiny. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that will be an upcoming video on the Destiny. Yeah, plenty of air. Plenty of air. So if you've made it through this much of the video, I know that you like this sort of content and I really like making this sort of content. Now, this was a 25 minute video that's been highly edited. It took three days worth of filming, maybe four, and you know, over a week worth of editing. So with all that time invested, the revenue that we get from ads on YouTube doesn't really justify it a lot of the time. So if you want to help us create this sort of content and you feel like contributing via Patreon and that's your sort of thing, there's a link to the Patreon campaign that we're launching in the description. Even a dollar helps. Even a dollar helps, so I'm told. <laughs> no pressure. Um, otherwise, ad block off. Always appreciated. Thank you all for watching. If you're not subscribed, do so. Go to our Facebook page, like it. You've watched 25 minutes of me talking about HPA. You want more of this. Bye! Bye! I've also put... Ah, it's fucking greasy! Fun fact, it's like impossible to look at this thing and not blink. You're a weirdo. I'm gonna shoot myself in the face. Hey! <laughs> He's got glasses. He's immune. Alex! Hey, internet, what do you want for dinner? We're ordering Japanese. Pick something. <laughs> Email us at make test battle.
There's dots. dots. Come. Make dot test dot battle at gmail.com. You can donate to our Patreon to help our pizza fund. <laughs> Japanese fund. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. We are over Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Actually, just put a just put a Facebook post, a poll, yeah. a poll on Make Test Battle. What should we eat for dinner? Doing it well. <laughs> you can't make a poll on a page, only on groups. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. That will have melt these plastic pieces together, never to come apart. Or at least that's the plan. And the Japanese food just arrived. Thanks, internet, for voting. <laughs> Join our Facebook page so you can vote. <laughs> On what we eat for dinner. Alright. 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 So. Alrighty. So. Alright. 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 So. Alright. So. Basically. Alright. Alright. So. Alright. Alright. So now. Alright. So. Ooh. Alright. 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 Really excited. Really excited. This is actually starting to come together now. Show me your excitement face. <laughs> I should do like a whole compilation like Ryan EXE. Of like, yes, yes, science. I did the math. <laughs> Make sure you can't see down inside the thing. Ready? Yep. 